Hello and welcome everybody to the TCIR Student Research Podcast. I'm your host Nell and it's my pleasure to welcome all the way from Hong Kong, Christy, um, who is going into her 11th grade in Hong Kong International School. Um, during her time at CCIR, Christy worked with Dr. Lagar um, in the field of mathematical optimization. Um, so welcome Christy, it's lovely to have you. <laughs> Thanks for having me now. Um, so I just wondered if you could begin by um, summing up your project, giving us the title or just telling us a little bit about what mathematical optimization actually means for those of us who have no idea. All right, so the title of my project is Optimizing COVID-19 Sewage Surveillance Using Mixed Integer Linear Programming. And so I guess maybe I should start with sewage surveillance in general. So sewage surveillance has been used in the past um, and it's been proven effective for battling various infectious diseases like um, polio in the UK. And so in about, I would say June of 2021, when the COVID-19 situation was really serious in Hong Kong, which is where I live, um, a team of researchers at Hong Kong University um, did did some research on how to use samples from sewage systems to identify these viral genome sequences and then compare them with clinical specimens to identify and confirm COVID cases. And so um, this was very effective, they found, because it was a very cost-effective, um, scalable, and non-invasive way to detect COVID-19. And so after reading this, I was inspired um, to sort of uh, um, further look into this for my project. And so with the generosity of CCIR, I was able to use the whole database of the University of Cambridge, which was really helpful because I was able to read um, a bunch of research papers and journals so that I was able to um, get myself more familiar with the field. And then, Eventually, um, what I decided to do with my project was to take advantage of like different sewage system data that we have in Hong Kong to create this um, simplex algorithm model using Julia, which is a programming language. And basically, in a nutshell, explore various ways to optimize time, resources, and achieve the highest accuracy and the widespread, most widespread usage of detecting COVID-19 in sewage systems in Hong Kong. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was fascinating. And I'm just amazed listening to you talk as to how, how you got interested in this in the first place. It feels like such a niche, but so sort of relevant and important um, topic that I think most of us would sort of never think about. It's absolutely fascinating. Um, so I'm guessing that your inspiration came mainly from the, your knowledge of what was happening in Hong Kong. Is that correct? Yes. I mean, yeah. yeah, I wanted to, there were many different like problems I could have done, but I wanted to do something that was, um, I could make something useful and contribute to what was most relevant to society at the time. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. did you, to see the impact at all? Were you able to sort of apply what you'd learn in practice or see how that was actually helping during COVID-19 at all? Or was it all still a bit early? Um, so right now, because I just finished my project and we're still in the publication process submitting to various journals. Um, so I've yet to um, like maybe see the impact as you would say, but um, for many like just running various programs using dummy data, but also data from uh, updated, like regularly updated sources. Like we were able to find interesting conclusions about just like um, to learn in much more detail uh, how we how to conduct the sewage tests, like based on the structure of the sewage system, like which manholes are most uh, cost effective and most you know effective to test, and etc. And like which locations, um, yeah, based on like population density and other factors. So I would say that I definitely learned a lot from the project, and I hope that after the paper gets published, it would be able to um, see, I guess, the concept, like um, make some sort of contribution to, yeah, like, yeah, that yes. could have a positive impact on public health. 
that's amazing um wow I'm sort of blown away <laughs> Um, so I wonder how how did you find the experience of working with Dr. Lagan? And you said, you know, you had all this of resources at Cambridge opened up to you. Um, how did you find approaching the sort of daunting prospect of entering into this academic environment where you have sort of all everything you could possibly need, really, and all the all the books and all the research resources? How did you find that? I felt that. It was very stimulating. I was really excited a lot of the time, um, even though it, my classes were like really late in the night because in Hong Kong, like everyone's from a different time zone. But I was, it was full of energy and everyone was really supportive. Uh, Dr. Luga, as well as the TAs, Sebrin and Lucas, they were really generous with their time and many emails back and forth. And they were really, uh, because especially with something like mathematical optimization, where it's a lot of computer science and a lot of hardware and software things could go wrong, <laughs> tech things, but they were really helpful. And even through Zoom, we were able to work out a lot of things. And yes, I think that it was a really fruitful experience because after all, like all our education at school and in college is really to, I mean, the future hopefully conduct research and this research is really for solving real world, real world problems. That's the whole purpose of education. And so I'm really glad I got a taste of research and what it means and what it means to go through the whole process with people who are so excited about what they study. And it's been an amazing experience. Oh, yes. I'm glad. And, and do had a was it a fairly large community um working on this project or um was it sort of just you and Dr Lagar or were there were there many other young people working in the same mathematical optimization um project or um so there was one other classmate in my course and we each had our own separate projects um which we consulted individually with Dr Lagar yes uh, every Okay. Yes. yes that's interesting to have somebody else I suppose studying researching in the same area but on two different um on the same course different, yes. two different yeah and and how did you find um I mean obviously we're so much more used to doing things online now and doing things on zoom but I wonder did you f feel connected enough um to Cambridge and to your project whilst doing it from um so far away I mean, I would definitely have loved to um, do it in person. It, it would be amazing to just, you know, every weekend just stop by Cambridge University <laughs> and do some research. Um, <laughs> but um, yes, I feel like even in the online uh, community was very, uh, how, how do I say this? Um, I felt very connected with everyone because everyone was so, so genuinely like Dr. Laga was really genuinely invested in like yeah. every person and every project and everything we you know we thought of and had to say and I, I just felt that everything was we got the spontaneous sort of live feeling through Zoom or through like emails and office hours and things like this I'm sure the experience in real life would be very different but I think online with the convenience of being able to meet everyone from around the world mm -hmm. in your own house at any time of day is yeah. quite amazing and I think the people I've met here have made it a really enriching experience oh I'm so glad it sounds it sounds really inspiring actually um so what would you say your uh, what would you say you've taken from the experience other than it obviously being very interesting and you've worked with some really cool people um what would you say the challenges were that you faced if there were any and maybe some highlights what you enjoyed the most about your project or the whole experience of CCIR in general <laughs> I think one of the challenges is really grappling with and accepting the nature of research which is mm. much very different from the very structured academic material that we are kind of spoon-fed or that it's all planned out at school and all the outcomes yeah. 
are predetermined yeah. and struct- the syllabus is structured in a way so that we get, we understand the concepts as quickly as possible. Um, but it was it was great to have the feel for research and how um, every single question you ask is based on results you get, which prompts you to find new results and ask new questions. And usually where you end up is totally different from what you expected. Um, but in the process, you learn a lot. And it was really uh, inspiring because everyone that I worked with, like the TAs, they were PhD students and Dr. Laga, they've done it so many times. And the whole process, I think it's just really, it was a really helpful, really helpful for my critical, like just the critical thinking in general and being able to juggle a lot of possibilities um, yeah. in your mind at once. And yeah. so, yes, so, and then just um, through the process of writing the research paper, like writing draft and draft just to reach like a perfect state. Um, so throughout the whole process, I think I definitely learned a lot about what it means to be a researcher and also I guess have a taste for what college <laughs> or um, yeah. university work. would look like. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you think has it inspired you to pursue um university or college then and maybe Oxbridge even? Maybe. I I think that I I'm there's so many possibilities and I still have two years before college. But I would say that um just the amount of freedom and the amount of resources and encouragement and support and just the energy in the environment has made me really excited and intrigued about um, the future in college in general and maybe I might continue further studying um, in mathematical optimization but actually funnily enough this summer um, around the same time as this uh, research research program, I had an internship at Hong Kong University where I was able, I worked in the department of chemistry. So that wasn't really mathematical optimization, but hopefully maybe in the future, I'm able to not only work with the problem solving part, but actually the biological like chemical part of this COVID sewage system problem and hopefully take it to the next level with all the research. and equipment that we are given at Hong Kong University. We don't know. (laughs) Yes. I mean, it's an extraordinary skill set. I'm gonna, I would place bets on you for saving our world. (laughs) Um, So what would you say, just to to finish, um, what's been a fantastic conversation. And it's so so great for me to, um, you know, on the other side of the world, be listening to someone so, young but so enthusiastic and so excited about um learning and and um contributing something to society you know it's absolutely fantastic you should be really proud of yourself um but I just wanted yeah to finish um if you could give some advice to anybody thinking about joining CCIR um maybe what your thought process was before applying um and yeah any top tips well, I would say I've learned so much from CCIR. I've not only grown as a student, as a researcher, but also as just like character development wise, because everyone here is so sophisticated and mature and excited at the same time. <laughs> I would say, and fun at the same time. But I would say that um, my biggest piece of advice that you might hear from everyone else is to just go for it. Um, I've never really had a lot of experience researching in the past. A lot of my experience with mathematical optimization or with math and computer science is mainly through math competitions or like school-wide exams or, you know, clubs and summer camps, but nothing really like this. And so I was really intimidated um, a little bit, at least even after the intake interview (laughs) and they asked so many questions but I would say just go for it and um what you put in is what you'll get out of it as always with research and to just be vulnerable and ask lots of questions yes and everyone I think 
really just go for it and please apply. <laughs> yes, and it, it's it's really a great experience that would really help. Uh, it, it's really useful to have a taste for research, especially since this is really the nature of what many high school students will be going through in a couple of years time. Yeah. Absolutely. I think your advice can be applied to life. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you so much, Asfreed. Absolutely wonderful talking to you. Um, and I wish you all the best going forward. And I have no doubts you're gonna go far. Um, and I hope to maybe see you in Cambridge one day, not just online. <laughs> I wish, I wish. Thank you now. <laughs>